Well, Mr. Benzakan, thank you very much for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Um, we, we all know about you as having a very distinguished career at GE and also at Ohio State. So you've seen the world from both the industry and, and academic point of view. And I'd like to just ask you what advice would you give to, let's say, a graduating senior, uh, what he or she can expect in, in the workplace going into the future? I think that's probably the most exciting job that a, an academic person has. Uh, because lots of students, very good students, don't know exactly what they want to do. Do they want to go into a graduate program or do they want to go into industry? Mm -hmm. And I try to tell them it's really up to them. But it deserves a discussion. Uh, I think in engineering, the potentials are enormous. Uh, and if I believe if they want to stay in research, they might consider really getting a graduate degree. Uh, if I want to go into industry, especially in the United States, they can get a master's while they're working for a large corporation. Mm -hmm. My advice to them would be to work indeed for a large corporation because the opportunities for growth mm -hmm. are there and the opportunity to do engineering and research at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, my other advice I'd say, do not want if you go into what we call the real world, the real world. <laughs> the real world, don't try to be a manager day on day one. Mm -hmm. Make sure you do have some technical accomplishments because you will be rated on your technical capability for the first few years. And if you do well, you will have a chance to become a manager or a leader or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like I was saying last night, the opportunities are immense. They're bigger than where I was when I started many years ago. Really? So, so the opportunities are bigger now? I think they are. They are because they're all-encompassing. Um, you, you don't have to stay in front of a computer all day. Mm -hmm. uh, within one or two years, if you work for General Electric or Boeing, you'll be traveling around the world right. because you're coordinating the parts Originally, we used to say you, you design parts and you make them next door. We don't make them next door. Right. We might make them across the world. Right. And now um, all the CAD work and all this comes to play. And you really have a sense that you belong to a global work. Mm -hmm. This conference has been called a global conference, right. and it is. It is for, for, for our students. Uh, I have some students at Ohio State, and within a year, they happen to be on the flight path at Boeing, mm. testing airplanes, wow. testing engines on airplanes. Wow. Or they're sitting in, at Airbus, working on installing the next engine on, mm -hmm. on a new product. Mm. Or working with an oracle, another corporation, a G today, I'll talk about G because I know G better than others. Right. Uh, you don't make an engine. G doesn't make an engine by itself. It, every engine, even on the military side, is really a collaboration. Right. And working together is something that I'm trying to preach to my <laughs> preach to my students. This is what the world is. Mm. You know, you, you, you can be a genius, but you cannot stay in your corner. You really need to work with people. Mm -hmm. And you need to work with people who not only don't speak the language. The language is not a problem because by now uh, there are many languages, well, definitely English that you can speak yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It's the work, working together, mm. um, which is, uh, I think, ex very important. Boeing had launched a... On the 777, when they launched it, they had an emblem on every building and every conference learn to work together. So then in that case, how would student learn that? Or can universities do a better job of teaching that? Or what, think, what do you think? I think the university can do, at least from my viewpoint, from where I am, mm -hmm. the university can do a better job of teaching them. Mm. That it's really, I don't teach anymore, but in the last few years when I taught something, I had a course that I called innovation. Mm -hmm. And various was part of the thing. 
what does it take to go work in, in the real world, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, the fact that you have to cooperate with other people, understand their point of view. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, I was fortunate or unfortunate enough <laughs> to, to start a program called the CFM, which was a collaboration. The most successful engine program? Well, we w didn't know that at the time. <laughs> and we started with, um, I shouldn't say that, but we had, we had G who said, well, you know, it's a 50-50, 50%, 50%. 50 but we, G, are 51. Right. Okay? Right. That's what I understand. And then there were the French, and I shouldn't have that, says, we're not going to let the American tell us what to do. Right. And guess who they put in charge of the collaboration? <laughs> I was, I was oh, a junior yeah. engineer and because I spoke French and so on. And that was an education. I even wrote a paper about this. Ah. And how it's important to, make sh to work with other people and you want to make it on the ba you want to give them the credibility for their technical know-how. Mm -hmm. To have a turbine engineer like me tell the bearing guys what they're supposed to do mm -hmm. was totally out of out of context. Okay. Today we have the bearing guys talking to bearing guys, the aero guys the same thing, the acoustic guys talking to the acoustic, and it works so much better mm -hmm. because it's really based on credibility mm -hmm. and respect. And when we started that program, we used to have something like 20 people sitting, 20 people G sitting in France and vice versa. Mm -hmm. don't, we don't need that anymore. Pick up the phone okay. and say, well, we got a problem there. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want is gonna say, you, be humble. Be humble. Be oh. humble, be humble. I mean, the time that I called my counterpart on the other side says, your parts are late and you're slowing us down and it's terrible. And two weeks later, our parts were late. Uh -huh. And <laughs> it's a different point of view. So you really want to develop the relationship mm -hmm. and they count so much. Mm. So, so, so far I've heard you mention, learn to work in collaborative modes and, and, and be humble and understand the other's perspective any other important skills that one needs to have before entering the work? And work very hard. I tell my young son, which is not that young anymore, you, I learned that from somebody who would say, you cannot stop working hard because you never know when somebody's looking. Mm, mm, okay? Mm. The other part is, uh, for this, what it's worth. when you have a chance to make presentations, mm -hmm. and we all do, right. And the presentation that counts is not the one you make for your own boss. Your own boss knows you. It's the presentation you make to his, his boss or mm -hmm. her boss. Mm -hmm. Prepare. Yes. Prepare. Because you have 20 minutes every every two months. And he will remember you when a promotion will be around. Mm -hmm. You say, well, you know, Jack didn't do so bad. Is mm -hmm. it worth, should we talk to him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So prepare, work hard. You cannot, it's important. So, it's, so in addition, then, then you're working hard and, and make good presentations. Now, in, in that sense, what, what makes a good presentation? Then? Well, okay, what makes a presentation? Know what you want to say. Know what you, beforehand, mm -hmm. just don't go preamble. What do you want to say? What, what do I want to communicate before I even start? Mm -hmm. Okay, and do I have one minute, five minutes, or half an hour? Right. I had the opportunity of taking a short course from somebody who is the was the speechwriter for Jack Welch who ran General Electric, ah, okay. and he said, "You're making a presentation. You get on the stage. The first five minutes, you got control." And then if you bore them after five minutes, they're lost. Mm -hmm. You can be on for an hour, nobody's going to pay attention to you. Okay. So this is, this is again, is the preparation. Okay. The preparation to the material. Make sure you have a message which is clear. It's clear to you to begin with. If right. it's not clear to you, then forget you it. Forget it. Uh, yeah. But I think it's, I, I, I don't want to, uh, before we f and finish, I want to say, it's a fun job. Enjoy it.
enjoy. Yeah. It really is enjoyed. Yeah. I mean, by the time you do all these things, I don't, you don't, it's not a slave thing. Right. You do things because you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I see this from my son. Now I see him enjoying what he's doing and being excited about what he's doing. And this is so important. But that, that assumes that, that you, you know what you like and dislike. And, and some students, at least when I was in college, I felt like I didn't know what I liked and, and disliked. So what, what, anything you can say to those who may feel that, that they're not sure of what they like or dislike? Well, um, you, you start. And you try to excel at what you're doing better. Mm -hmm. And very important, most, it's true in a corporation, it's true in academia. Make sure you have a good relationship with the people you work with. Uh, because nothing is permanent, mm -hmm. and if you do something <laughs> that you think you don't think you want to do after a while, mm -hmm. uh, you'll find something different mm -hmm. that that would appeal. I mean, what do, most important, we all want to feel that we're making a contribution. Right. Okay, right. and if we don't think we make a contribution, we need to find a way to do that. Mm -hmm. Either to do it in your job or to find another. Another way to do it. Another way to do it. Okay. Now, I just, but I, I, I have to ask you this question because sure. you've been in industry and, and ac academia in important positions. How, how would you characterize each one, or is that even possible? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, and there are lots of different opinions about right. it. Right. Okay. Um, I do think. Industry is very exciting. Um, academia can be very exciting. I'd like to think that the best of both worlds is to have, be able to work with both. As you have. Well, but I've done it in sequence, if you will. Right. But if I were in academia from day one, I would like to be able to work. Not only teaching is one thing. Right. And some people are very happy just teaching. Uh, more and more I see people really wanting to do research at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. I do, because I'm primarily an applied person, mm -hmm. I think it's great to work with a, with a corporation yes. or, or a government entity, whether it's NASA or it's mm -hmm. whatever it is. It makes it more exciting. Right. I, I, I would agree with uh, that. So I don't know that one is better than another. Uh, it depends what you want to do with your life. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. if you want to do pure research, academia is not necessarily the right place to do. You right. can go more and more. There are some very large research centers. There are some in the U.S. I'm sure there's some in uh, around the world. Yeah. Okay, and you can do that. And the resources you have, at least from the little view that I have, if I look at what it takes to get a million dollar microscope mm -hmm. sitting at Ohio State mm -hmm. and what it takes to get a million dollar microscope sitting at Global Research mm -hmm. for GE, they're two different worlds. Right. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you cannot get it, uh, but it's much easier in a large corporation. Okay. Uh, you're probably more independent at the, at the at the university level. Okay. I think you probably might have just better know. But both of them have a lot of rewards. Okay. I, s I have been fortunate um, coming into academia. Uh, the first job I got was to be a department chair. Oh, that was your first academic job after this is, this is, And that was the blind leading the blind. Okay. <laughs> but I learned a lot of things. I said to somebody in the last day, I left a group I was leading a thousand people. Mm -hmm. I came to academia. I was leading fifteen people, and it was more difficult than the other one. Can, I can believe that. Yes, right? yes. But I learned. I learned. I learned how to deal with people. Okay. It's an education, and find out some. We have tremendous asset. We have a professor, which an MIT graduate. I, I hired him out of somewhere. I don't want to say where. And he's very happy really having uh, a cadre of students mm -hmm. who go to IGTI every year mm -hmm. 
we're going to have to get him changed and come over here. <laughs> but he has, he has his students, and they present their papers, and he follows their paper. This is what he's happening to do. Mm -hmm. uh, he manages probably a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year program. He's not interested in doing a right. super and being the superhero or leading a department. Mm -hmm. That's not what he wants to do. Right. And we need people like that right. because that's what helps us move along. Okay. All right. So I think for the sake of time, we may have to wrap up, but anything else that, that you want to just emphasize before we close on this point? Well, I do think I'm, I'm very much of a global person. Um, I do think more and more this is becoming real. Mm -hmm. I think the conference that has been started here is a step in the right directions. Uh, I think I would encourage students, as I said at the earlier, to join a large corporation as opposed to what we call the mom and pop shop mm -hmm. because their opportunities are bigger. Okay. And work hard and enjoy it. Okay. That's what I well, Thank you very much. Thank you thank very you much and thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you.